Hi, everybody. What an act to follow. I'll try my hardest. My name is Fiona, as you know, and I'm convener of Friends of the Fort. Um, this is, it's been a very exciting journey, and I know today I'm so excited and chuffed to be here. This is the, actually should be called the saga of the wandering sign. This was the sign which was stuck literally on the fort, which every time Scottish Borders Council cut the grass, the sign moved. Sometimes it was in the caravan park, sometimes it was as it is here on the side. And I thought it only had a little bit like this is a 16th century fort. And looking at it, you couldn't see a thing. So I decided that, but maybe there's much more to it than you think. So I phoned up Scottish Borders Council and spoke with Chris Bowles, who's the archaeologist there, and he's scrumptious. <laughs> and had a long conversation with him, and he said that he would come out and walk me around the fort. So the grass, I have to say, was up to my waist, and I'm five foot eight. So anyone smaller than that needed a little flag. So we, he took me around, pointed out what this humplock was, what that humplock was, and then he, at the end of it, he said, explained all what, and I was so excited. I thought, here we are in I mouth. We've got this up here, and no one knows anything about it. So he gave me Tom Dawson's a phone number, and poor Tom. <laughs> and the team have been absolutely superb, and if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here at the moment. They were so supportive, and they came down, and we thought to ourselves, this is far too good. So I had a dream, and it's almost there. I spoke with various people in the community, the local farmer, and this young man here, Big Sandy, loved his quad bike. And so Sandy was so excited at being asked to come and zoop round all the different lumps and bumps. And the community, Scottish Borders Council, the local council, local people, General Mills, William will speak about that. And we cut almost 300 bags of grass that day. It was a nightmare. <laughs> but afterwards, it was absolutely, this is us cutting like mad. It was just, it was a sunny day in I mouth, which was very unusual. Okay, really. And just Roe was supporting. And I think that was you. Willie will now take over the next bit. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. I I'm Willie Crombie, I'm the secretary of the group. Uh, I'm not going to say that I'm the youngest of the group, <laughs> but I am. Uh, I also work at General Mills, and this is uh, a big thing for General Mills to get involved in, uh, supporting community partnerships. Uh, we may go out to a town and do a bit of painting in a, a passageway or for graffiti. Uh, we may do a beach clean. We may do clearing rubbish from paths and walkways. In this case, it was cutting grass. So in 2012, our uh, work convener of the Charities Committee was contacted by Fiona about cutting the grass just to see what was there. So as part of the uh, General Mills International Think Global Volunteer Local uh, project, about 20 20 volunteers started cutting the grass. And I've got 200 bags here. I don't know where Fiona got the three, but <laughs> never mind. So such was the enthusiasm of the group that General Mills has played a heavy part in the organization of uh, any funding that we needed uh, for helping when we've had difficulties with people and bodies. Uh, and now they're providing ongoing support. This is another photograph of the, the strimming. Uh, this is in, just in front of the, the English fort. This is the King's Mount after the first strim. This is the, one of the most important parts of it. Uh, this is where we, we found little bits and pieces of uh, stonework as well. And the whole fort, uh, the little yellow bit in the middle, that's the, the bastion of the, the English fort. So I'll pass back to Fiona, and she'll talk a little bit about how we did it. 
chatting to Tom and, and Joe and Ellie, they decided that the best thing to do would be to have meetings, and we wondered what to do next. So we had public meetings, invited guests, general public, and we chatted, as you can imagine, endlessly. And then Joe in initially sort of suggested, let's have a Friends of the Fort. So Friends of the Fort were, was born. And we, sorry, and we at that time involved the high school, not so much the primary at this very early level, we actually in, in, involved the, the high school. And we had a couple of weekends, and this is one of them when the children came down, and we had um, Eddie and his helicopter, and we did mar marvelous things with this. It was zooming through the sky. The seagulls all disappeared that afternoon. And then Tom, we did 3D catching, and the children then did 3D work in the community center. And this is Eddie with our local MSP, Paul Wheelhouse, and he came down. He's been exceedingly supportive and been very helpful in us going ahead to speak at Parliament. And this is our group doing geophysics. The only prob problem is that the tufts are about 10 feet high, and it was more like an expedition than geophysics. And that was my side, my best side. <laughs> it was a very windy day. And this was us doing other, uh, just with the whole weekend. And then we, um, one couple of the members approached the primary school and decided that perhaps it'd be a good thing because it, it was very obvious that people in general in, in, in the town had no idea about the history of the fort. It wasn't taught in the school. It wasn't even taught in the primary school, which I thought was a bit strange. But often being an incomer, the, the, you know, you're sort of much more aware than people who have lived there all their lives. So we made, and we, or we suggested perhaps that they do an art competition. So the children did an art competition, and these are the winners. And at the same time, we were working with the um, computing department of St. Andrews, looking forward to doing our 3D, which you can see outside. And the children were all very much involved. And the same thing with the high school, they came down and had a, day, had a whole day of leaping all over and having great fun discussing which, which way the caravan park is. And this little girl here is about two foot high. And then we had a public meeting um, and 150 people attended. And Dr. David Caldwell and Dr. Bess Rhodes, um, Dr. David Caldwell had actually done a dig in the 80s and um, had found various things in the dig. One in particular, which is very exciting, was a, a silver, um, tassel, which the French people who were there at the time had, well, by the pictures, they're bedecked in tassels. I don't know why they ever managed to fight. So David had gave a, gave a really, really interesting lecture. And Bess Rhodes, she, she's a historian at St. Andrews, and she had done research for us. And um, at that stage, she had found lots and lots of things which she let us know. So. So what about the history of the fort? It's all about the time of Mary Queen of Scots, who was born in Linlithgow Palace, 1542. Uh, her father, James V, never, never seen her. He died about 10 days later in Falkland, I think. Uh, at the time, both kings of England and France wanted Mary betrothed to their sons. So for, the, for Mary to be hitched to the English king's son, uh, the rough wounds started. The series of battles that they, they did, and it was not very nice rough wound. I'm just going to give a little bit of the history. Uh, Mary's mother was Mary of Guise. She was a French widow. She came to Scotland in 1538 to marry a uh, widower, James V, whose first wife died after being in Scotland for, I think it was 38 days or something. She, I think she was uh, tuberculosis. I think that's what she died with. Uh, so at that time, young, uh, young Mary was moved to France and betrothed to the Dauphin, Francis. Mary then later on became a regent of Scotland in place of Mary while she was in France. And then we move on to the 
developments uh, with gunpowder. Uh, during the early 15th, 16th century, gunpowder was being developed and old castles, which the type of King Arthur uh, on the television, could easily be knocked down by cannonballs, artillery, all that sort of thing. So they decided that the only way to protect yourselves was to put yourself behind a mound of earth. And this is what the English fort would have looked like at Eyemouth when it was built. Now it, was, it was built to an Italian design, which was Tras Italian. It cost just under £2,000 to build, and it was probably the first Tras Italian fort in the whole of the United Kingdom. It's yet to be proven, but I'm sure Tom's going to help us. This is a copy of a Tras Italian fort in Nicosia. You can see the bastions, just the same as the, the Eyemouth fort. And Machiavelli says, the only way to resist artillery is to get yourself behind an embankment and stay safe. In 1550, Treaty of Boulogne, uh, between France and England, they decided that the English would demolish the fort in Eyemouth and that ended the war of the rough wooing. Uh, the English fort was completely destroyed. In 1558, the French fort was started, and there was any time there could have been up to 500 people in that fort. Oh, sorry. So, uh, this is a little uh, photograph from the 3D technology that we've used in the, in the fort, in the museum at Eyemouth. Uh, and these items that's here are all based on fact that Best Roads discovered and David. Slate roofs is another thing that they used in the fort. At first, we didn't think that the French fort was a substantial build, but apparently it was. Lots of oak, uh, hundreds of timbers, great oaks, and slate roofs which gave them a lot better protection up on the, the promontory. Artillery. In February 1558, there was 16 score of oxen sent to the castle of Hume, which, if you know the area, is just north of Kelso. Uh, they were sent there to bring cannons and smaller guns and different things to the fort in Eyemouth. So it was, it was going to be quite a big affair with 300, I'd like to have seen 320 oxen coming down the road with a couple of cannons. It would have been quite a sight. This is the route they would have taken to Eyemouth, if they had route planner. But it might have been slightly different, but that's a rough estimate of how they got there. In 1559, the Treaty of Cato Cambrese, uh, it was a treaty between the French and the Spanish, but it also involved uh, the French being moved out of Eyemouth. They had to demolish the, demolish the fort. Queen Elizabeth I was very worried about this at the time, uh, about the French fort at Eyemouth. She was, she was told, or somebody was told, we heard, we've had dubious reports of who it was, keep an eye on Eyemouth. The whole purpose of the walls at Berwick after this was because of the fort at Eyemouth. It was a very important fort with regards to Scottish and European history. These are the walls at Berwick, and they're still like that today. If you walk around them, you can just imagine that's what the walls at Eyemouth was like on top of that promontory. So back to 2014. And I'll hand you back to Fiona, who's going to finish off the presentation. Five minutes is all right. Thank you. I shall speak very quickly. This is, this is as we come back. And we had decided um, that we should have, in the interim period, I had managed to get a grant from the Scottish Borders Council to build a booth in the museum um, and with, to, to, uh, to house our 3D enactment. Um, and they came to the party. We built our booth in the museum and we decided we would have a grand opening day. And so we paid for 
because and local people came 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 to the party and they, they they donated money and we actually then had an enactment the borders reavers and they arrived in full gear and we had a fabulous day over 200 people came into the museum and um it was fantastic this but especially we, we all had a free shot at dressing up it was super and um, they had the muskets which they decided to shoot halfway through and as they shot them two and a half thousand seagulls took to the air and everyone dived under the tables just in case <laughs> really good um, we also had by this time um, had worked out that um, there was much more we hoped we had the museum open we had the grand opening day and we had the reenactment and we thought that that what would be the next step and at this stage paul wheelhouse the msp suggested why don't you come to parliament why don't you do a presentation at parliament why don't you try it so we did and we went to parliament and we had all the people who were terribly important of course all arrived and it was a super duper time and um, we had we had wanted all along apart from signage for our fort which is the most important step next we'd always had a notion and had asked tom if we could have a 3d model that people could actually touch and feel and at the time he said well not sure and not terribly sure and the night of the parliament he um he was very sort of edgy about talking about this 3d model and um, a gentleman called mike arrowsmith who was speaking earlier was a bit shifty when i was saying i'd love a model i'd love a model love a model and lo and behold halfway through the model was produced and it's on our table and it's just absolutely fantastic um to think that it's been it's it's come just from sort of 3d i'm not terribly technical but with lots of pictures and things and it looks absolutely fantastic we had our meeting and that was fantastic it was super and then since then we've had lots of invitations obviously to come here which is a highlight last tuesday jenny and i gave us gave a, a talk at um haddington and we thought it might be the women's rural institute so i said to jenny i won't worry because we'll probably fall asleep after half half an hour because we have had experiences of women's rural institute and after 10 minutes they are all asleep and lo and behold over a hundred people came and not one of them fell asleep so we were quite chuffed so the next step is Musselboro, and then over the winter our goal um, as a community because it's very much community is with the school and then we've just got to get ourselves organized with it's okay to have the 3d model in the museum but we have to have the fort properly signed signposted and really appreciated so we'll be grass cutting like mad and trying to raise funds for the signs but thank you for your attention and thank you very much for asking us because it's really exciting Thank you.